Hey, this is Rebecca Dirks with PremierGuitar.com. We're here checking out Gary Rossington's gear at a Leonard Skinner show with his tech, Lewis Williams. Uh, let's check out what amps he's using. These are a uh, Gary Rossington limited edition Penta series that PV has made for Gary. Been using them now for, oh, almost three, four years. Um, pretty much it's uh, it's not no channel switching or anything. It's just set up for distortion and he rides his volume pot to clean it up on the guitar and he can get a clean tone just by rolling the volume down a couple of notches. And, and tubes? Got, uh, those are Electro Harm EH right in them now. And they like six, six, six L6s? L6s, mm -hmm. and um, 12 AX7s on the preamps. I've got five of them, so I've got plenty when things, if things go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> How got, many do you run at a time? Just the one. Just I'm just using that and one speaker cabinet. And if that anything blew in that, and I switch over to that cab, or if this head blows, I just two cords in the back go to the other. I had them specially made where the inputs are on the back. I like to use right angle jacks, and you can't get them in right here. Oh, sure. And if you put a straight one in, it's kind of in the way when you go to turn that knob. So I've got inputs on the back, so that's why you don't see anything plugged in there. So in the back, I just take two cords out, move it to that head, and it's up and running again. Kind of speaker or what kind of speakers? Widows. They're stock Black Widows. Um, Gary A. Bead some different cabinets and chose the Black Widows. He's generally played JBLs, but he liked these and we've had no problems. I've got two Sure UR, UR4Ds uh, wireless systems. They run into this four way switcher, so all I've got to do to change guitar and wireless, if he's on the main guitar and I want to go to number two, I just hit number two, hand him a guitar, it's running. Uh, so I've got four, four switches for, yeah, for one for each wireless. So it's very simple to change guitars with him. Just hand him guitar, hit my switch with the foot, and it's changed. All my wirelesses run into the back of it. One, two, three, four wirelesses. There's one main output that feeds the amp up here, and um, so that's like that. That's wireless one one one. That's number two. If I went to that. If I want to go to this wireless, number three, down to this wireless, and number four. And of course, the packs are all Velcroed onto the straps, so I can have all of them on at the same time. They don't interfere with each other. So it's on when I come up here to do a change. When I see him roll his volume pot down, I'll go to number two, hand him the guitar, it's hot. All he has to do is roll the volume up. Well, let's uh, check out the guitar, son. Okay. This is his main Les Paul, which basically it's played, played the whole night. This one was actually in the Nashville flood last year. It was underwater up to here for uh, five days. Wow. And a place called RS Guitar Works in Kentucky restored it for him. Uh, it's chambered out, so it's very, very light. It's got standard Gibson um, humbuckers in it. Oh, it's all Gibson. Um, and RS did a great job restoring it. This whole thing was just wow. peeled up. That's great that, uh, you All know, right. he was able to bring that back to life. Yes, it's, it's, he's used this one for a long time. It's not one of his vintage ones. They're all in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But it was a great one to get back. It just does not go out of tune. He plays it all night long, except for one song. I've got another song. Oh, sh guitar I'll show you over here. Uh, what string gauges is he using? Nine to f uh, 42. <laughs> This guitar is called an Access Gibson Les Paul, where it's the heel is uh, shaved down so you can reach all the way up. It's very thin, very light. I've got it tuned to an open E, which is used on Skinner Nation. And it's just a one-shot guitar, so after that song, I put it away. It's a great guitar and just light as a feather. And you guys, you have got some, you got some backups to these ones? Yes. Yes, I'll show you the mate. This one is the one we used after the flood. He brought it from home. It's also chambered out. And we used that in the first six months until the other one got repaired, and then he wanted to go back to the other one. But it's still a great guitar, stays in tune. Um, just light as a feather. Very pretty flame top on it. And um, just everything is stock Gibson. We changed this one for Freebird. This is the only uh, time he plays the SG is for Freebird, and I've got two identical ones for it. So that's the one he, um, he uses on stage, and um, 
Then I've got a backup for it, just like I got a backup for the Les Paul. I've also got a third Les Paul backup that I had never been hasn't been pulled out in a year or more. <laughs> so is that a Gibson Custom Shop? Yes, all this is Gibson Custom Shop. All the Les Pauls, the Access, uh, they've really been good to us. They've worked with Gary for years and years, and he's one of their uh, major endorsers for them. They've really been good to us. Is there anything special that you do when setting up his guitar guitars that he likes? On this particular one for Freebird, he actually changes the B string to another G. So I've got two G strings. So it'd be E, two Gs, D, A, E. And these are tuned in unison. And when he plays the intro and the slide part for Freebird, he kind of cocks his hand side, the slide a little sideways and gets a little wobble off the two, which makes it fatter and fuller sounding. Other than that, no, it's just straight, straight setup. Uh, he likes fairly high action, which is great for me because you don't have to worry about fret buzzing. And um, and he will play slide on his main guitar too. I've got it set up high enough to where it doesn't fret out when he plays slide, and yet he still likes the, the highness of the action, which is a lot of players want it as low as it to get to the fret without buzzing, and sometimes that's hard to do. But when Gary asked me to raise him up, I've got no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two identical. I mean, you couldn't tell the difference in them there. I do give him, I just picked one when we got him. These were, his main ones were lost in the flood. We lost all our gear in the flood, every bit of it. Stuff that was vintage from the 60s and 70s. Uh, every bit of it was gone. So they had to bring guitars from home. And when he brought the SGs out from home, they were original, the original ones. So I was very uh, leery of having them on the road because they were worth thousands and thousands of dollars. They had uh, nicks in them and a headstock where he would smack them on the cymbals back in the day, but he's uh, calmed down quite a bit <laughs> from them. So it's, these these aren't nicked up at all, but it was amazing having the original ones out I'm here. Sure. But, but I was scared to death having them because they're just priceless. Uh, what kind of strings is he using then? GHS. All, all, the whole band's strictly a GHS, bass and guitars. And these are just a straight 10 gauge set of GHS, other than I do change the B to another G. Um, and uh, for slides and picks? Uh, we use Corsedron Classic Large for the slides. Picks are made by DeAndrea, and I rarely go through any slides. I get them back, I, he lays them on the drum riser right after Freebird, so as soon as the show's down, I'm grabbing them because somehow they disappear yeah. if I don't do that. So I've had the same two slides now for oh, a year and a half or more. I hadn't lost one or dropped one. So. Right. There are, uh, any other cool particulars about uh, Gary's rig you'd like to share with us? It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's yeah. like I said, he, he'll he play most of his rhythms down on, on about seven and a half to eight, mm -hmm. and it really cleans the amp up. When it's time for single lead notes, he'll, it's, he's a mat, you can hardly even see him do it. He'll just reach down real fast, turn it up, and the lead notes just sing. So it's um, it's a great job. He's, yeah. he's a great guy to work for. I mean, it's real low key, and as long as everything goes right, everything's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for well, taking some time you. to talk to us about uh, Gary's rig. Thank y'all. Uh, we're here at the Leonard Skinner Show, checking out Ricky Metlock's gear with Tech with Chris Regalo. Uh, we're gonna start by checking out what's in the guitar boat. So why don't you take it away? Okay. Well, we can start with the main one Ricky uses the most. That's his. Uh, Explorer reissue. Uh, that's a flood survivor. The flood they had in Nashville uh, ruined a lot of our gear, most of our gear. Uh, this one went to RS Guitar Works in Kentucky and they restored it, did a little, some little woodworking and uh, electronics and kind of brought it back to life for us. This has been added. These Vibrola uh, tremolos, Ricky likes. You can see there's still a hole there from the stock tailpiece. Oh, right. A couple of them are like that, that he has. We're added on later on. Yeah, so it's not stock by any means. No, any other mod? Um, none that I'm aware of, other than the pots have been replaced, the switch has been, you know, all for, uh, for being, from the being a standard user every day, you know, a daily driver or whatever. Um, yeah, all the parts have been replaced at some point over the years. Pickups are, I, th I believe, are still original, though. Um, and uh, what string gauges does he use? He uses a regular gauge, 10 through 46. And a standard tuning? 
they they tune half step down for Leonard Skinner. Yeah. So that's that's the only difference, half step down. So you can it's easier for the singer, I guess, and then bend in notes is easy, a little easier, rather than using a thinner thinner string. So is uh, he gonna use this guitar then most of the night? This is used most of the night and for Freebird, oh, okay. always for Freebird. The sound and the action, then you can get the reach with this guitar. And then uh, I'm gonna show you two more Rickies here. This one is the. Uh, 76, oh shit, Les Paul custom that he's had since, uh, I guess since Blackfoot days. Again, this has been added yeah. at some point. This is my fifth year with them, but this is, the guitar hasn't changed since I've been with them. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do anything different to this one. Was this one in the flood too? Luckily, no, this one was at Gibson. They were uh, taking spec specifications off of it, I guess. And uh, luckily it was there in the shop when that happened. So, and does he have a backup for that one? This one, actually we just got one again that came from RS Guitars. It was another Flood Survivor. And he just played this the first time the other night since we got it back and it's sounding great. He likes the way it plays. A little bit of, you can see some of the, that's from the Flood, the Kraken. It sat in water. Well this one actually sat in a case, in another case but still in water, like up to about here. B was in the flood as well. Oh, really? Uh, these two explorers and this one, this one. Yeah, there's three were in the flood. And then uh, Sparky just uses a standard Stratocaster. This is like a mid-90s, I think, reissue. But this is his main guitar from the whole, the whole show until Freebird. This is all stock. As far as I know, it has a um, the tone pod that goes both ways. It's like a center notch, and you can you can go negative tone forward and back. So I, you always got to make sure that's a, if I'm polishing it. Mm -hmm. I might make, why does it sound weird? Yeah, this, he's playing this Paul Reed Smith. That, I guess it's just it's one of the newer mid two. They uses this for Freebird. It has the humbucking sound rather than the single coil. All right, thanks for showing us the guitars. Let's uh, head up on stage and check out the amps. Okay. Uh, so whose amps are these? Yeah, these are. Uh, this is what Ricky's been using since the flood. He was using Marshalls, 100 watt, 100 watt Marshalls, but uh, they all got ruined. And uh, he had tried with these out, I guess, a few times, and uh, actually met the the builder, Rick Saint Pierre, a Canadian builder. He actually tours with uh, Z, um, ACDC, yeah. So they've been using all their amps, along with other artists. So Ricky got a hold of a stack, and uh, Rick's been helping him out for, I guess, about two years now. He's been using these, and they're 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 great. They're, Do you they're, run them both? They're the old Marshall sound. One's a backup, should something happen. But had nothing's happened so far. They're they're real uh, real versatile. He's got a combo there, and those are those are 200 watts, each 100 watt amps with a built-in attenuator on the back, so you can turn the volume down without spoiling the tone. You using the four by twelve, the single four by twelve. Single four by twelve, yeah. Uh, what kind of speakers are in that? They are. Uh, I know they're 20 watts, but uh, they're ones that Rick builds, I guess. Um, Wizard Amp speakers, yeah, and the, he used to use the Celestians, the vintage 30s. So I know they're real similar, the 20 watt to 30 watt. And is he using any effects? One, a chorus, a chorus pedal. That's all. It's on all the time. Okay, so you're using the Hardwire chorus, and uh, an AB box. I mean, that's not even an effect. That's the only effect Ricky uses is a chorus. And you said that that stays on all the time. On all the time. Yeah, it's just a subtle. A subtle chorus. It's not real thick. That is a pretty simple rig. Yeah, it actually is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and very reliable with the with the new amp, the brand new amps. And uh, what uh, amps is Sparky using? Sparky's using these Fenders, uh, Devilles. And is he using any effects? He's got that pedal oh, board. He's, up, he's the one with the pedal yeah. board. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. So what does he got on the board here? Uh, what's always on is the reverb and the compression. You know, a little, just a little reverb. I guess uh, 
He's, he's happier with that sound rather than the one. I think these, there's reverbs in these amps, but he won't use those. So the reverb and the compressor is always on. And then he has the, the blues, blues driver for boosts for solos or the full drive for solos as well. And some, uh, some slide guitar where he needs the overdrive. And then the two delays. One, um, one is a simple slap back. And uh, the other one is set for, um, I know a little. I know that's one of the settings. Well, thanks a lot for showing us around and what the guys are using. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks. This is Rebecca Dirks for PremierGuitar.com.